Hey guys, it's Katie from Brain Company Face Painting and Body Arts and Rain Co Insiders. And in this video, we are going to be doing an on the job basic beginner tutorial for a little puppy. So this is going to be a great um, design for those of you who are volunteering. Uh, maybe you're doing professional face painting or learning how to do professional face painting and are um, doing free to the public type of events. Um, so it's going to be good for those. It's a fast design and um, it will get your line moving quick. So some of the supplies that I may be using today are my tag regular white and tag regular black for line work. These are wax based paints that are good for line work. Um, sponge work is usually done with more of a glycerin based paint. A tag is a wax based paint so that it does uh, really good for line work. And then I'm not going to be using it today, but having a white holographic cosmetic glitter um, is always handy to have. You don't have to go crazy with glitters, but if you have at least that, um, you'll be set. It's very versatile. Sponges that I typically use are these half round sponges. This one happens to come from sillyfarm.com. Um, this is a teardrop sponge. Uh, I think it's by Always Wicked Art. And uh, you can see the difference in size of these. The teardrop is about half the size of the half round. Um, if I had to choose between uh, the two of them, I would go for the teardrop sponges. They're great for small faces. They're already in a convenient shape for ears and butterfly wings um, and other shapes that you can make with this uh, sort of teardrop and triangle shape. So they work really great for that. So those are the sponges I use. They're high density sponges. I have a mister bottle to activate my water-based paints. You might want to grab a couple of these to usually run like a couple of cents to a dollar or more. And then in terms of paint, we'll go for brushes first. Uh, for brushes, because this is a beginner tutorial, um, I'm going to do everything in these beginner tutorials with the Paint Pal Classic Brush Collection. It's a nice versatile collection. It's relatively affordable, runs between $25 and $30, depending on where you get it. And um, it includes these six brushes. So it includes a three quarter inch flat brush, a, uh, <clears throat> a filbert brush that's, that they call the big drop brush, a pretty petal brush, which makes pretty petals, and three round brushes, a number four, three, and one. Um, so those are for doing line work and I usually for my number four or my number three the most. And in terms of paints, um, I have a large palette over here that I use with my uh, normal day-to-day -day kit, but we are going to replicate uh, something closer to what I started with, which is this tag uh, 12 color palette. It includes black and white in here, even though you can't see it in this picture. And is a great starter palette for, um, like I said, volunteer events, or if you're really just kind of dabbling and trying to get into face painting to see if you like it. You can grab this buyer's guide, how to build your first face painting starter kit on my website at rayfaceart.com forward slash learn. And um, it has a lot of different budget levels in there so that you can start out with something small and work your way up and US based suppliers and so on. So, that is what we're working with today. So we're going to be doing this puppy tutorial and I'll go ahead and zoom into the face that we'll be working on. And this tutorial uses, uh, utilizes that big drop brush quite to my paints. Let me zoom into my paints here and I'm going to go for um, a darker brown that would that's the sort of the brown that would be included in a 12 color palette. So I'm going to go for this darker brown. My paintbrush was already wet. And so I'll come back over to our face. And the first thing that I like to do is I like to have a teardrop sponge handy. So we'll grab that. And the first thing I like to do is I just like to draw a circle around the eye with my big drop brush. Being careful not to get too close to the eye um, eyelid um, or as close as you feel comfortable. And then while it's still wet, I pinch my brush to use the heel side of it. Let me get it to the right angle. 
to use this side of it. So I kind of pinch it to make a nice soft round uh, area. Now my paint has probably dried a little bit since I was yapping. But anyway, I come in here and I kind of blend in the inside of the eye. So you would just be, of course, not blending on their eyeball, but <laughs> blending the, uh, blending onto their eyelid and it'll just kind of give you this nice fade between dark to light. If you want to make your um, circle to be a little bit more organic or irregular, you could just kind of go back in and add some swiggles here and there to make it a little bit more irregular. And then again, you're just going to come back in and fill it in. Now you could do that ahead of time as well. I just typically tend to do the circle and, um, and, and try to not make it so big. It's sometimes when I do the irregular version, it ends up being too big. So um, I don't like to make things usually like oversized. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a baby wipe and just clean off the eye so it doesn't look like he's getting blinded. <laughs> Clean off the eyeball here. Not that it matters and not that you would do that on the job necessarily. <laughs> but, okay, so anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get back into our brown. And here we can just add, you know, a couple little spots here and there. You could just do it right there on top of that other uh, on top of that other eye, you could do, you know, maybe a little one on the cheek over here. You don't have to go crazy with it though. Just a couple will make a difference. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my um, Big Drop brush, the Filber brush. I'm gonna go into the, um, to the pink, we'll do the tongue. So the fun thing that you can do about, you know, any of this is you really, you can change the color. So you can always ask if uh, your, if your guest wants to be a pink puppy or a blue puppy, or um, if they want a pink tongue or a red tongue, you know, I like to really interact with the kids. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and go with a pink. This might be a little bit darker than the pink that would come with that 12 color palette. Probably be something a little bit more bubble gum like this, but we're just gonna use this one. And the Big Drop brush really works awesome for these tongues. You can kind of almost like lay it down this way and just press down and drag it up onto the lip and then finish it off with um, just going the other direction. So it works really great for these little tongues. And you can make them, you know, long tongues or a little bit wider but if you paint on top of the lip, it really sells it. All right, also rinsing my brush out and going into black. Um, you might be able to save a step with the Big Drop brush since we're gonna work on line work next, um, but I'll just show you that you can make a nose really quick with this Filbert Drip brush. So you can just come in here and just go around in a little circle and around. And there you have it. Your nose is done. A dirty, quick design for those on the job um, events where your event is free to the public and you have long lines. Um, but you can still have some fun with glitter and customization in terms of colors. So, so next up, we're just gonna do some outlining. And for that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my number three round brush. And um, so we'll just come in here and we'll outline this guy just like this. And when you're doing line work, what you want to do is you can use your pinky for um, stability. You also want to keep your brush perpendicular to your work surface. And the way the camera is positioned, 
Um, it may not look like I'm doing that, but I am. So that's one of the biggest mistakes um, with line work. If you're getting really frustrated with it, um, it might be just because of the angle of your brush and you're not keeping it perpendicular. And I think the trick probably to learn is how to be able to use your pinky to vary the pressure that you're putting on the brush. So if you really press down, you're going to get a thick line, but you can also get really thin lines as well. After I outline this, I will show you what I mean by that. So what we do is we just go around the eye and my kids are home from school. So if you hear them in the background, I apologize, but that's life. It's reality. Got those kids in the background. So we're just going to keep going around just like this. And we're going to come down here to our tongue. We're going to give an outline there. Give a quick little flick up to get that going. And we're about done. What we can do now is we can just add some quick highlights and call it a day. So this is a really nice, simple design. Just gonna go ahead and use my white uh, and my number three round again. And we'll just uh, add a quick little highlight on this tongue, which will make it pop. And we'll just press down and make a big oval there that's shining on the nose. You could also add a couple highlights around the eye if you wanted. Uh, it's just gonna make it look like it's a shiny eye and that's not a big deal. It kind of brightens up the design a little bit. I'm always a big fan of white. Um, I'm always a big fan of highlights just to kind of make things pop a little bit, so. One thing you want to try to do with highlights, if you can think about it, um, is just keeping them all in the same direction. So um, if the highlight is on top here, and sort you know, like if the sun or the light source, I guess, is coming from this direction, then you're going to want all of your highlights to be on the tops of your um, elements, your design elements. Um, so that's pretty much it. Oh, I was going to show you um, the difference how you can, um, with the line work, sorry, I'm losing my words tonight. So with line work, I've got my, my number three round brush, but with line work, um, let's see, we'll just do it over here. <clears throat> when your brush is perpendicular to your work surface and you press down, <clears throat> if I give it a lot of pressure, and I draw a straight line, I'm going to get a really thick line. So this is where, you know, having your pinky sort of handy um, and using it as a guide, it helps you kind of understand how you can make different widths of lines with your brush. One of the things that tripped me up when I was first starting painting was that I thought <clears throat> that in order to get a line like this, and I can probably make it even thicker than that. So this is, like I said, a number three round brush. <clears throat> One of the things that tripped me up when I was first learning how to paint was that I thought if you wanted to get a big thick line like that, you would have to go with the bigger brush. Well, that's true, but you can also use that same brush to make a thick line and a really thin line. Um, where it helps to switch to like a thinner brush, this is a different brand of brush, but where, when, it, uh, when it helps to switch to a thinner brush is if you really want to control the thick, how thick you go and you want to be able to work fast. So I will grab a thin 
liner brush like this if I want to be able to really put pressure down like this like what I did with this line but I want to be able to work fast so if I want to do some quick swirls that are really delicate and stuff like that I know that if I um, put a lot of pressure on the brush I'm still going to get a relatively thin line and so I guess that's kind of how I think about it but over the course of the year, I've really challenged myself to use um, one basic brush, usually a number four round brush, and um, I'm able to achieve a lot of different widths of lines with that one singular brush. So if that's something that trips you up, like I said, I would highly recommend um, starting with the Paint Pal Classic Brush Collection. It's a really awesome, versatile brush collection and um, it only has those three round brushes, so you won't have too many options to get you overwhelmed. So that wraps it up today. Have fun with this design. Like I said, vary the color of these elements. It definitely doesn't have to be all uh, brown or black. You could ask the kiddo if they want a pink nose or a black nose or a pink tongue or a red tongue, or if they want their dots to be um, blue or green and one tip that I have for you there is just take a look at the outfit that they're wearing and pick out a color or two that matches their outfit don't ask them what their favorite color is it will take them a long time to decide especially if they're looking at your um, all the colors that you might have available so just say um, this or that do you want green or blue um, you want your puppy to be green or blue or brown or blue or brown and or pink um, so just give them a limited number of options to keep that line moving. All right. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. You can find me on Instagram.com uh, forward slash Ray Face Art for real life examples. And you can pick up this buyer's guide, how to build your first face painting starter kit at RayFaceArt.com forward slash learn. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We'll see you guys next time.